So in general, the nature of the judging axes can be described in this way. The FETI axis asks, what do you think and how can we communicate that? TEFI axis asks, what do you want and how can we get it? These two attitudes can be summed up as translating and operationalizing, respectively. The one axis seeks to understand the logical form or structure, introverted thinking, underlying various sentimental appearances, extroverted feeling. Thinking along this axis is a bit like trying to construct an android, a structure of programming and framework on which a realistic, socially pleasing skin is placed. A good example of this is the logical project of Russell and Whitehead, who were trying to develop and justify an abstract system that could account for every proposition in varied human experiences, cultures, and languages. The other axis seeks to apprehend the hierarchy of desires, introverted feeling, motivating the creation of various structures to accomplish those desires, extroverted thinking. Thinking along this axis is a bit like trying to construct a mechanical appendage controllable by a living, breathing human in order to accomplish certain tasks and thus fulfill certain desires. A good example of this is Newton's development of calculus because he wanted to solve a specific problem and needed that framework to do it, not for its own sake. This relates directly to celebrity types observation of NTP knowing and NTJ willing, though my own proposition is that this in fact applies across all types in the form of these judging axes, albeit with varying degrees of appearance. I believe that in the sense above, the FETI axis is more naturally wired to seek abstract knowledge, while TEFI is more naturally wired to make concrete its visionary will. So this is the primary basis for the philosophical conflicts between FETI and TEFI. This is demonstrated nicely by two quotes from famous philosophers representing each worldview. First, Behind all logic and its seeming sovereignty of movement to their stand valuations, or, more clearly, physiological demands for the preservation of a certain type of life. Friedrich Nietzsche, who is an INTJ. The second quote, Amidst all the variety and caprice of taste, there are certain general principles of approbation or blame, whose influence a careful eye may trace in all the operations of the mind. That is David Hume and ENTP. I really wish that I could do those accents and make that sound ten times cooler, but, you know, what are you going to do? Hence, the TEFI attitude, represented by Nietzsche, assumes that people do things because they want to, they desire to, they have a passionate, sentimental drive to. Desires and feelings are the metaphysical bottom line for which structure serves only as a vehicle. Meanwhile, the FETI attitude represented by Hume assumes that people do things because that is what makes sense to them, because that is the decision-making paradigm which they are working off of, and all feelings, motivations, and desires result from the way a person chooses to logically view the world, whether they realize it or not. Feelings and motivations are merely, merely the skin of logically ascertainable principles upon which people operate. These two views of the world are, of course, mutually inimical. They inevitably chase each other's tails around. Nietzsche says to Hume, for instance, So-and-so stole that bread because he wanted to feed his family. To which Hume replies, yes, that is true, but why did he want to feed his family? I say it's because he is adhering to a familial principle or duty. To which Nietzsche replies, I suppose you could put it that way, but why is he operating according to that principle? It's because he wants to, because he loves his family. To which Hume replies, yes, but that's not a bottom line explanation. We need to know why does he love his family. It's because that is his logical worldview. To which Nietzsche replies, what do you mean that's not the bottom line? His logical worldview has to be motivated by the fact that he loves his family. And so you see that they constantly go around in circles and so on. It should be noted, of course, that this is regarding psychological structure and not content, as celebrity types often says. 
The philosopher preferring F-E-T-I can most certainly agree with Nietzsche that people act according to desires and not principles, and eschew all those supposed prejudices I have just attributed to F-E-T-I. One could argue that actually David Hume sort of does that. Yet notice what this philosopher has done. They have analyzed Nietzsche's accusation into a logical principle that people do not act according to logical principles and has then extended that logical principle to all people, getting underneath the sentimental ways they disguise this truth. As always, the actual structure of their mind has contaminated the content. The same thing applies to the TEFI axis. One will also notice that this entire video, as well as most, if pretty much not all, of my other videos, are very clearly written from an FETI perspective, and I, I didn't even really realize this till I've started analyzing the axes in this way. You'll notice I am laying out valueless principles as the framework underneath people's motivations and desires. I'm explaining the TEFI axis as a series of principles that they do not in fact realize they are adhering to in their focus on desires and motivations. Some with that axis may very well restate these same ideas in terms of the underlying desires motivating the FETI axis to construct and attribute logical systems to everything. So that is my current conception of the judgment axes. Um, if you agree, disagree, have any comments, criticisms, um, please post them in the comments below and um, see what you guys think of this. So thank you for watching. I hope this was useful, and I will see you in the perceiving uh, axes video. Thank you.